Sure. Um, the first one, I guess, is, you know, why did your team conduct the study? I know that there's a lot going on with COVID and yes. all of the other diseases around it and trying to figure out what's going on with it. So, yeah, so, so um, the reason we did, and, and, we, and we actually, this is a, uh, is a review paper and it's, it's kind of a, an opinion piece. Too. So we reviewed like 60, so we didn't do a prospective study. We reviewed a lot of the literature uh, that's being done on this topic. And the reason why we got started to do this is because um, it's, it's known that hypertensives are, are having a higher mortality mm -hmm. in, uh, in COVID. And in a way you could say, that doesn't really make sense because when people think of hypertension now, it's like everybody, and it's um, uh, you know, and, and people uh, don't seem sick with hypertension. Mm -hmm. Now, it certainly is possible. It's just that the people who are non-hypertensive in the adult population are so healthy that it may not be that the hypertension itself is is doing something uh, bad. Right. And there's certainly many other comorbidities like cardiovascular disease and diabetes and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that have higher mortality too in both than older people do. But, the, mm -hmm. but the, the interesting thing about is that we know that one of the sites of entry of the virus is on the ACE2. And so this is involved with hypertension, the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. And so ACE inhibitors and ARBs could be playing a role in this in both a potentially good way and a negative way. Mm -hmm. And so, so we wanted to delve into, was it clear, one, is it good or bad? And what is the evidence? And, and we basically reviewed all of this information uh, mm -hmm. for the clinicians. Certainly, certainly there's no definitive answer, but right, right now it does look like that the, um, that the ACE inhibitors and ARBs uh, may actually be um, mitigating some of the lung injury that right. could be happening in uh, in COVID. It's mm -hmm. certainly premature for people to um, to start using these agents right now, just because of that reason. Mm -hmm. But the but the thing is, we certainly believe that the evidence is strong enough that there was even suggestion a couple of weeks ago that maybe people should be getting off their ACE and ARB because right. of this issue, and that certainly doesn't appear to be the case right now. Sure. Okay. Um, I, I did um, write a quick article about your um, paper this morning that I'm going to be accompanying with this. But um, so that, that's kind of what I read from it. It seems like if you're currently taking these medications, then you should not stop taking them because there's no evidence that it's going to increase the harm or anything like that. That's kind of the bottom Correct. line. And if, if anything, the evidence may actually be more toward benefit as opposed to harm. Uh, but uh, but it's, it's, it's certainly there's... there's, there's uh, there's, there's still some controversy, but I think no one right now is really uh, is is suggesting that people should stop these medications. Okay. And and like I said that they're they're even going to be doing trials of these medications to see if they can actually uh, limit the the lung injury. Okay. Cool. Um, so I guess one of the um, side effects that is associated with ACE inhibitors, or at least according to what I was reading there, um, is a cough that comes with it. So does that, uh, people that are taking these drugs, do they go in there thinking that they have something and does that play into yeah, this so, at all? So first, first of all, the, um, that is a, another issue. And I actually personally stopped prescribing the ACE inhibitors over a year ago. Mm -hmm. and, and you may remember a, a little bit, it's probably now been about 15 months ago, there was a big study in British uh, Medical Journal about um, that the ACE inhibitors were associated with a little bit higher lung cancer risk. And, and you know, for, for three decades, we've known that some people get a cough, and if they got a cough on the ACE inhibitors, um, we always took them off and, and usually switched them to an angiotensin receptor blocker, which really very rarely causes a cough. Mm -hmm. And most people that have a cough on ACE inhibitors, they, it's a benign, we always thought of it as benign. Uh, and the, we thought the reason was due to something called bradykinin and, and, and substance P release. Um, but it's certainly possible that this could also be involved in lung cancer. So when this, that study came out at 15 months ago or so, Ashna actually, where I work, actually sent out um, uh, emails to all the providers saying switch everybody. Would have backed off on that because 
many of the um, providers argued with them that they were making too much over one study, and the study was not bad, but it was certainly not perfect. It had a, it had flaws in it, and and now 15 months later, there's been no word from the American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association, American Hypertension, or the FDA putting any warning on the ACE inhibitors. But I thought the study was credible, and so I actually started changing my patients you know, pretty much to, to ARBs. But right now, I think that, uh, you know, obviously the people who are still on ACE inhibitors, they, they have selected themselves out because they didn't usually have the cough from the ACE inhibitors. I mm -hmm. think right now, though, if you're going to be starting one of these agents, probably it would be better to, to use an ARB for several reasons. But one is that right now, you don't want to confuse the cough from a COVID infection right. versus uh, a, just a benign, innocent cough from the ACE inhibitor. And so ha using the ARB uh, would, would probably be uh, preferential right now. Also, I think if anything, the evidence for the ARB being protective is probably stronger than the ACE inhibitor. And so uh, I think that, I, I don't think that right now that's strong enough that people should be switching people from ACE inhibitor to ARB if they're doing fine on their ACE inhibitor. But I think that right now, um, probably there's more evidence for the ARB. Uh, and, and, and they certainly have, you know, have traditionally been better tolerated agents in the first place. Okay. Fantastic. Um, all right. Well, that, that pretty much, it might've bled into my last question there, but um, the last question was just, you know, so what's the take home message here for cardiologists, for practitioners of all stripes that deal with hypertensive patients? So. Yeah. So right, so right now, um, you know, clearly patients and, and, and clinicians should not be stopping these medications uh, for people who are at risk of COVID or people who actually develop COVID if they still need these medications for their hypertension, for their chronic kidney disease, for their heart failure, uh, they should be continued. Now, obviously, if somebody gets very sick and their blood pressure gets too low to be on them, you have to stop the medication. And likewise, even if a patient right now has COVID and they're having severely elevated blood pressures or going into congestive heart failure, these agents could still be uh, and should still be used. And so right now that shouldn't be... Uh, a factor in, in, in deciding on whether the patient should or should not be on, on these medications. And I also think that it is also premature right now for people to be starting these agents prophylactically mm -hmm. uh, to try to limit COVID or to limit the severity of the lung injury. Right. If there's not a other reason to be using them, uh, that is an area of active investigation. And there's, there's trials that are going to be being done as we speak. Uh, that are trying to assess this, but in the absence of a trial, we shouldn't just be doing this uh, on theoretical reasons. Okay, fantastic.